So with anything in life, things get boring. As humans, we crave new experiences, we crave novelty. When you drive the same path to work every day, you get used to it. It ends up being like cruise control. The same applies to your outfits, and if you're bored of them and you want to upgrade them, well, fellas, welcome back to the channel. And sorry about the break I took. I took about two weeks off. As you guys can see, I'm in my my new place, AKA where I grew up because I'm saving up to move back to New York City. And if you guys haven't seen it, I did upload on my second channel, so I technically didn't miss an upload. But yeah, guys, go ahead and check it out. Subscribe to that channel for more behind the scenes of my life and you guys can get to know me a little bit better. And also this video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 1,000 of you guys that click the link in the description and sign up are going to get two months for free of Skillshare's premium membership. I'll talk about them more at the end of this video. So turn the like button blue and bless the channel with love and let's talk about how to improve outfits that you're bored of. So the first tip is something that you've probably heard probably everywhere on YouTube, and that is to keep your sleeves up to show off your forearms and your vascularity. I personally don't think of it like that. I just think it's a great way to switch up your outfits. And whenever you wear fitted clothes, yeah, sure, it's gonna make your forearms bigger if you guys care about that stuff. But also, since it is a fitted long sleeve, it is gonna stay up if you just push your sleeves up. But what about more oversized and relaxed fitting clothes? Well, that's damn near impossible to keep up without constantly having to readjust. Well, here's a hack that I got from this other YouTuber. Her name is Jessica. Y'all should definitely check her channel out. So grab a hair tie from your girl or something that's not like a tourniquet, and you're gonna use this to roll your sleeves up. Oh, but Johnny, that's so feminine. Your boyfriend must find that cute. You shut your mouth. Shut Anyways, guys, the hair tie or the rubber band, whatever you guys use, all you gotta do is roll it up your arm. I like putting it, you know, where the elbow bends, so whenever I bend my elbow, it doesn't hurt. And then you just wanna roll the fabric of your sleeves in between and above it to cover it, and then that's gonna keep your sleeves up. It's a look that you don't really see as much out there with more oversized shirts. They're typically drapey and never really stay up, which is a look I really dig as well. But also, if your girl needs a hair tie, you can just hit her with the boom. You looking for this? <laughs> and also, it's a great way to keep your bracelets, your rings, and your watches exposed. And speaking of watches, that is an easy item that you can throw on a fit that can make an outfit more cohesive or just pop. So I was never really into watches because I knew that was a rabbit hole most guys never really dig themselves out of. And I already have a sneaker collecting addiction as you guys can see. So I went down that rabbit hole and I was bit by the watch bug. Anyways, not only are watches a good accent piece to throw on, it's also functional. I recently picked up this Orient Bambino and Orient TriStar. These are great affordable watches that are made way better than many of the fashion watches out there. I typically wear the Orient Bambino with a lot of casual fits because the watch is a dress watch and the contrast between the fit and the watch is something I personally dig, you know, very casual, very dressy. I like to mix that a little bit. I feel like you should just wear whatever you want and not have to conform to the, oh, it's a dress watch. Why aren't you wearing an Oxford shirt and a tie? I just think that's ridiculous, guys. Don't follow rules. Wear whatever you guys want. Anyways, guys, a watch is going to serve you well, and I'll be making a video on my top five beginner watches very soon. Next tip I have for y'all is to throw on a pair of frames. So whether that be shades or blue blockers, a pair of glasses adds sophistication, but also just adds another texture to the face. That could be in the form of a tortoiseshell acetate or a thin metal frame. Just think of it like another piece of jewelry. I just wear these blue blockers right here because I actually find that it does help me fall asleep a lot faster, but the choice is yours. I would personally stick to blue blockers because they are more versatile. You can wear them with all your fits and you don't have to take them off indoors. Next up, we have cuffing. So some people do find it weird to cuff your pants and show off your ankles. I think it changes the look of your fit in a good way. That's just me. And you also get some breathability out of it as well. For me, since I'm on the shorter side, most companies don't make pants for shorter dudes. There's always a lot of extra slack that causes major, major stacking. And a few stacks is cool, don't get me wrong. But when it starts looking like you have the bungee pants, but for your jeans and chinos, yeah, that's not for me. I personally like doing it to reveal contrast in the shape and colors of the socks to the sneakers. But also some pants like the Dickies 874, yes, I'll still wear it uncuffed, but cuffing it reveals the white stitching, which is just a minor detail, but a great detail that contrasts against the fits, and I really dig that. But also, with all these tips, it is just an option. If you find cuffing your pants to be feminine, hey, you do you. After all, this is a homemade video from some kid in New Mexico who doesn't know how to dress. Take it for what it's worth. Now my next tip for y'all is something I've mentioned a lot in the past, and that is to support your local shops local brands, and pick up their merch. Museums, coffee shops, skate shops, boba tea shops, restaurants, whatever's local in your area, just pick up some merch from there. Whenever you guys do this, not only are you supporting a local shop and not some mega corporation, think of it like Zoomies and your local skate shop, but also the merch that you get is actually quite unique. Scarcity and exclusivity is a big factor whenever it comes to making a purchase, and it's actually a big part of the hype culture that exists today. Whatever you pick up, it's going to be a unique design, hard to get, or unknown, and it's going to make your outfit unique. 
week. Plus it actually shows that you enjoy that business and sometimes you can get a discount from them for showing love. So for me, you've seen me get these accessories from White Sands, New Mexico. I got these at their local gift shop and I got a ton of questions on where y'all can pick it up. Well, you can't unless you visit White Sands, New Mexico which is in the middle of nowhere, by the way. This is a shirt that I got from Meow Wolf, which is a museum in Santa Fe, and it's all about art and the experience inside. It's awesome. So you bet that artistry translates to their merch, making for really awesome and tasteful designs. What's really cool is they do have an online merch store, so I'll leave links down below for everything I mentioned where you guys can pick any of these up. My skateboard deck is just a blank from Industrial, which was a Southwest-based skate shop that unfortunately closed, but they had some really cool designs back then. These pins and shirts I got from the Wonder Museum in Chicago. Again, very artistic place with really well-designed merch. This shirt right here comes from one of my favorite coffee shops in town. This shirt right here is actually one of my boys streetwear companies. This is Astro, by the way. I'll leave a link down in the description where you guys can check it out. They have some really cool designs and it's, you know, it's a local brand here in Albuquerque. And I really dig the graphics on these. Now, yes, a lot of these shirts are probably going to be sourced with Bell Canvas and Gildan, which is, totally cool there's nothing wrong with that but again the design isn't just some slapped on logo and you're actually supporting a local business you know you're keeping the business afloat especially during this pandemic that's happening right now in 2020 so i encourage you guys check out your local museums gift shops state parks coffee shops or even a restaurant pick up their merch pick up stickers water bottles whatever it is, it's affordable and it's going to give you a better appreciation for design in general rather than just the brand name and hype. Next up, this is very simple. <laughs> Wear some more colors. I know, I'm one to talk, but start with the little pieces. A beanie, socks, bracelets, then you can move on to clothing items. No more of this dragging down the saturation. Pick up some colorful stuff. Last but not least is something I still find quite underused, and those are your belt loops. Use them to accessorize. My recommendation, obviously, start with the belt. Any belt of your choice. I just had this Elise inspired Amazon belt that was like $20, pretty simple and affordable and has a tactical look to it. Then I definitely recommend a carabiner for dangling your keys. They're very functional, gives your fit a more technical tactile look and it's harder to lose your keys. I also sometimes tie a bandana to my belt loop for a pop of color or a pattern. You also got wallet chains and plenty of other items. But if you don't like carabiners, I really do recommend these key clips. I have this one from Lululemon that's coming in. These ones are more simplistic and they extend longer and get more exposure making for me a more tasteful look and you know what else is tasteful learning a new skill with the sponsor of today's video skillshare skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together and take their step towards their creative journey with thousands and thousands of classes that will suit anyone's interests they offer a ton of informative classes that will further advance your career or expand your creative interests even if you have a busy routine from photography graphic design business singing They've got y'all covered. And since 2020 has been terrible, I enjoy spicing it up and making it a better year by learning something new. I've explored a ton of classes offered here, all from productivity with Thomas Frank to the staples of branding with Jeff Staple. And now with my recent move back to my parents, I've been diving into this class by Emily Henderson about interior design. And I'd say I did a pretty solid job with the room so far. I liked Emily's class because she actually walks you through her process on placing items throughout her home. And I'm a very visual learner, so telling me to do something doesn't really register as well as seeing someone else do it. And that's why I really enjoyed her class. I definitely recommend this class since all of us are going to be moving at some point in our lives. And since most of us are staying home more often nowadays, if you just want to switch up the look of your room, this class and Skillshare is the perfect place to go. And the first 1,000 of you guys are going to get two free months of Skillshare's premium membership so that you can explore everything that they offer, whatever you guys want to learn. They've got you covered. And after that, it's only going to be $10 a month on an annual subscription. It's super affordable. Thank you guys for visiting the link and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And that's pretty much it fellas. The light just went out. There are plenty more things I could have included in this video like tote bags. You guys have heard it all though. Anyways, you guys can follow me on Instagram at flywithjohnnytai for more whack fits. Turn the like button blue for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help my channel out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until then, stay fly, stay animosity free. Check out Skillshare. I'm out. Peace.